Hello everyone, in today's video, we are going to make use of the LLM prompt provided by the Angular team to create a simple to-do application. This LLM prompt was recently created by the Angular team and is available in the Angular documentation. The link to this will be provided in the description box of this tutorial on YouTube. If I scroll down a little bit, you can see this prompt currently on the documentation. So all you need to do is just copy it and paste it in your uh, LLM chatbots. For me, we are going to make use of ChatGPT in this video and and we're going to tell ChatGPT to make use of the instructions in this prompt to create a simple to-do application and then we're going to see if the code is following the best practices as stated in this documentation as you can see it tells the prompts to make use of the best practices in TypeScript as well as Angular and also when you scroll down a little bit you see it's telling the prompts to make use of the LLM to make use of state management uh, like signals which was really recently introduced as well as in the templates it tells the LLM prompts to make use of the at if at for at switch control flows instead of the ng if directive and ng4 as well as the ng switch directive which was ready there available in previous editions of angular house as well in the services it tells the llm prompt to make use of the ads injects function instead of the constructor so we're going to see if the code is going to follow all these instructions listed in this documentation so with that we can get started with this tutorial quick pause i want to tell you a little bit about a little side project i'm currently working on called angular.ng this project is simply a productivity app i intend to make it open source currently i have two applications on this dashboard the first one is a currency converter the second one is an invoice generator which i'm going to show you in a moment also as the name implies this project was created with angular as well as superbase so if i scroll down a little bit you can see how the landing page looks like so let's quickly log in if you don't have an account you can sign up and register a new account using either your google account or your email address and password those options are provided for you by making use of superbase so i'm going to select my email address and then I'm going to get logged in to the dashboard. So briefly, I'm going to show you the first uh, application on this page, which is the currency converter. I'm not going to test it out right now. I'm going to just show you how it looks like. And then for the invoice generator, you can see that you have the ability to add an invoice. If I click on add invoice, and then it's going to direct us to the add invoice page where you have the forms. I'm not going to fill this form now because of time, but you can do that uh, if you're really interested in this. And then I already created a single invoice. So if I click on the drop down option to view the invoice, Invoice, you can see the invoice I created, which is just a sample invoice. And then um, if I click on download the invoice, it's gonna download the invoice. I can head back to the invoice page and then delete this particular invoice, which I'm, which I'm not gonna do right now. I'm just gonna leave it the way it is. So this project is going to be a open source project which supports junior developers in Angular who are looking for a project to contribute to. I'm gonna make it available in due time. I just wanna make two or more changes before I make it available to the Angular community. So when it's available, you're gonna get updated. If you want to be among the first few people that wants to know when it gets updated you can sign up on the app i'll have access to your email address or you can send me a message on this chat box here i'm gonna get it on the back end of the support chat so uh, when it becomes fully open source we are going to be made aware of that so with that we can get started with this tutorial make sure you like make sure you subscribe as a form of support to the channel and with that let's head back to the tutorial so to get started with this tutorial the first thing i'm going to do is to copy this particular prompt provided by the angular team head over to chat gpt and then i'm going to paste it in then below the prompts i'm going to enter an instruction which is create a simple to do application in angular using the instructions in the the above prompt so let's wait for the chat gpt to generate the code base which we're gonna implement inside of visual studio code so as you can see chat gpt has come up with a simple to do application so what i'm going to do is just to integrate this code base into our angular project and to do that i'm going to create a new angular project in my terminal so i can do that by typing ng new and then the name of the project which is going to be called to do and i'm, I'm going to press enter and as usual we're going to be presented with some prompts i'm going to select yes for this and select css and no for the server side generation and pre-rendering so let's wait for the project to get generated before we proceed as you can see the new angular project has been generated for us so we need to cd into the right project directory which is i think we call it the project to do so i'm gonna open it up in visual studio code with the code dot command so within the project we're gonna start following the instructions provided by chat gpt currently we have the default 
spoiler plates templates for new projects created in angular all our configurations are inside the app folder and inside there we have the app.html app.routes as well as the app.ts file which are very important files in an angular application so heading back to the code generated for us in chat gpt the first thing we need to do is to configure our route so through that i'm just going to grab this particular path for our route every other configuration i think has been created for us because when you head to the app route we already have the route imported from angular router so i'm just going to paste in the route uh i think i'm not generating a to-do component i'm going to make use of the default components provided by angular which is app.html and app.ts so in fact i'm going to get rid of this i don't think we would make use of that in our to-do um application so i'm just going to head back we're not going to we're not going to make use of this route in fact so i'm just i'm going to scroll down a little bit more and i'm going to grab everything that was imported in the to-do components remember for us it's going to be the app.ts component so quickly i'm going to head back here and i'm going to grab everything that was imported at the top i'm going to copy it head back to our components and then i'm going to paste it in. so you can see we have the forms module imported we have computed invert emitter impute output function imported as well as the component as well as change direction strategy and then we have an interface with an id title and completed so the router outlets i'm going to be afraid of because like i said we will not make use of the router because our component is going to make use of the default components provided by angular so i'm going to get rid of everything in the app.html file we don't need it so let's proceed by adding back to the code generated for us in the gpt so i'm going to copy the imports as well so i noticed one thing in the instructions provided by the llm prompt it tells tells chat gpt not to set standalone to true inside their components as well as the add directive as well as the add pipe decorators so what i can see at uh, the standalone is set to true within the at components i don't know why chat gpt refused to follow that instructions but as we continue we'll see if it's would base other instructions provided by the LLM prompt now we've imported the forms module the reactive forms module as well as common module so let's proceed or head back to chat gpt and i'm going to copy everything within the template so i'm going to grab everything and i think it stops at main yes so i'm going to copy the main and then i'm going to paste it in our app component html File. so we get a bunch of errors because a lot of the functions here we've not you know integrated into our ts file which we are going to make use of in a moment so quickly let's head back and then i'm going to scroll further down as we make the implementation and then we have this uh, change detection also among our at components decorator so before i proceed with this change detection i saw something on this in the angular documentation when i head back as you can see in the component it says sets change detection that is the change detection strategy dot on pushing at our component decorator so it obeys that particular instruction which is kind of cool so i'm gonna copy that and then i'm gonna paste it within our at component decorator so let's head back to our projects and within the component decorator I'm just gonna paste that so we now have change detection sets to push and then we can work all that down the project let's grab everything including the function in the to-do component so i'm gonna grab that up to the remove dot remove to-do function so i'm gonna copy that and then i'm gonna paste it right here so all errors disappears so i believe this should work i don't know so what to confirm if we're gonna get any errors not going to start project by adding back terminal and then i'm gonna run in have and then let's wait for the project to hire meanwhile heading back to the project you can see this project is making use of signals you can see the, we're using signals to manage the state so in signals we have access computed we have access to the update function as well as okay i think it just makes use of the update function as well as the uh, computed here yeah. i think those are the two uh signal events that are available for this simple to h i know there are other ones like sets which i don't think yes i'm gonna search for set okay we have set value so um i think the prompt was able to make use of a lot of modern architecture in the app.html it makes use of the app core control flow which makes using the track compulsory so um i think that is done properly if i scroll up a little bit uh we're making use of reactive form um i think that's all basically that's all so it kind of follows the instructions provided the only thing it deviates from is setting standalone as true the reason why it says the llm not set standalone as true is because 
by default is because by default from i think version 17 of angular every component is um, set as default to be standalone as true i'm not sure about the version but i think it will be 17 or 18 i'm not sure you can correct me on that but um, when I head back to the code base, you can see it says standalone true, but based on the instruction of the LLM, it's not supposed to do that. So that's why I didn't paste it here because by default, this is a standalone. So let me check the compilation. So let me open up code by heading over to localhost 4200 and let's see if our project properly. Let me open the console in case we get any form of error as well. So I'm just going to open up console. Then let's try by typing in a single to do. Uh, let's say I'm going to play soccer and then I'm going to add the do be uh play basketball i'm gonna add that to my to do so if i check this so it is it remains one out of two that i'm left to do well i think we are more concerned about functionality here so don't look at ui see if i remove play basketball it gets removed so i think this is uh working affected so you can always add a guitar this to your to do and uh, play baseball i'm gonna add this as well and when i click on uh, one of the tags it says remaining one out of two tags so remaining zero out of that which means i have no tax uh, left do so i think this is the to do app and i think uh, the functionality is not bad at all but i think there's no persistence in local storage so when i refresh the page, everything clears i can as well tell the prompt to persist this car storage but i just wanted to test out the code base uh, based on the instruction provided by the llm by the angular team i think the charge gpc prompt is able to follow it to a larger uh, that's just it for this video i just wanted to play around prompts and see how one of the llm prompts charge gpt will have this thing uh, it's not too bad because a lot of the code base are, are up to date as that instructed. So when you want to create anything or you have issues in your Angular project, you can always paste that from there. Follow those instructions before you generate that code using it. So that's it for this tutorial. If you have any questions, drop it in the comment section. Very glad to answer. If not, make sure to like, share, make sure to subscribe to you again next time.